Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to cover the facade pattern. The facade pattern is not too complicated, you have probably already used it without even knowing its name. So in this video all I'm going to be doing is putting a label on a concept that you have probably already reinvented. Facade is essentially taking a system and a system is a composition and interaction with many components and hiding that interaction behind a simple to use interface. You can imagine the system and all the components, how they interact as a spider web. And by putting a facade there, you contain the spider web and you don't let it spread across your application. Here in this example, what I'm gonna show you is a kitchen example, right? So a kitchen can be very complicated. Let's say you come to a restaurant and instead of a menu, somebody told you, right, there is the kitchen, ingredients are there, recipes are there. Go look up the recipe, uh, you know, as a kind of like a documentation for what you can prepare. And then the ingredients, the tools, the appliances, and everything else are the components that you have to use. That doesn't happen. You have, you essentially have the facade of the restaurant. You come in, you pick the meal that you want. That would be the function on the interface. And then whatever happens inter internally, the chefs, the waiters, uh, the ingredients, all of those little things, the way that they interact with each other to prepare your meal in the end, that's essentially the system behind the facade. So the facade is the restaurant and the interface that they give you is a menu, right? And the rest of your interaction is probably with the waiter. And if you're a problematic one, you ask to see the chef and you ask him, excuse me chef, why do I have this hair in my food, right? Hopefully uh, you don't get hair in your food. Uh, and if, you, if you don't have a leaking abstraction, you shouldn't have hair in your food, right? You shouldn't even know that somebody's cooking you. But anyway, that's beside the point. Let's go over this little example and then uh, later on we will take a look at some of the real world implementations in case you're still confused about what a facade is. So again, we have a kitchen, we have appliances, so fridge, microwave, oven, we have uh, dishes, so what can we prepare? We can prepare Big Macs, steaks, whatever, ingredients, right? All right, so like some grain, <laughs> liquid meat. <laughs> it's basically what can you use to cook your meal, right? Uh, and then you have recipes, so a chef would need to know the recipe. You have an intern chef, you have a master chef. All of those can be each individual classes, each individual components. Chef could be probably a library or whatnot, right? So then you have the tools and then you have the utilities, uh, like cutting boards, right? So you need to take uh, the onion, you have to put it on the cutting board and then the chef have to, has to take the knife and cut it. And then you have your, yeah, where it's like uh, pots and pans, you have to put it all in a pan and it will start cooking, right? So you have your I prepare meal context interface, whatever you want to call it. This is the facade. This is the thing that says you as the person who needs the end thing, Big Mac, you do not need, you're not necessarily concerned with the flexibility of the internal system and picking and choosing yourself what you want, you rather want to see the menu and you want to basically say, right, I want this thing and that's it, okay? The facade implementation itself will then grab the recipe from the chef that knows it, grab the ingredients from the fridge, from the shelf, wherever they're located in a database, you grab the carrot from the Redis store and then you got to grab the tools, right? So do you have .NET installed? Do you have, I don't know, Docker, Dockerized fridge container? And you know, you grab all of those little things, you assemble them, you put them for a function to fry, you send some events out and whatever. And at the end, you get your Big Mac. The Big Mac cooking process comprises of many little steps. That's not just the recipe, not just the ingredients that you need, but the whole assembling process of the end result is what the facade hides. If we think of the kitchen, as this being the system, the facade is the one thing that basically already gives you pre-baked configurations, pre-baked recipes of how you can use the system. Let's take a look at some of the real world facades out there or things that could be called facades. Again, systems are complicated and comprise of many, many components. So here we have the Microsoft Identity Library, the thing that provides you with authentication, right? Today we're going to look at one thing and that's the user manager, right? So have, if you've used ASP.NET Core, you're going to know the user manager. This is the thing that allows you to, to create a user, to query for users by ID, by email, right? So it gives you convenient functions to do so. 
So let's see what is actually needed to create a user, right? There we go. Uh, check if the service is uh, disposed, uh, some update, some security stamp on the user. I don't know what the heck that is. Validate. So you do, you have like some security stamp, some validation. You have some locking on the record here present, and then you have uh, the actual write. Then you have a, a couple of sanitization of the data on the user. So creating a user is not just putting a record in the database. There is a little bit of other infrastructure that is involved in like kind of uh, making sure things are correct. And that is just one function in basically a library. And then you also have the sign-in manager, which again has to like pull all these different components together to generate your cookie, to make sure that the credentials are correct. I put it into the HTTP context, like, all of that is basically hidden behind a nice to use interface. And again, as I said in the beginning, you've probably already written something like this. This can just be called a facade, okay? Let's take a look at a microservices example now. This could be a little bit more exciting. What we're looking at here is Datomic. Now, in short, Datomic is a database. It does way more than just a regular database. This is a project that I wanna get into some point although i haven't yet so i'm not gonna do it this service by trying to explain what it is we're just gonna take a look at some of the architectural imprints and try to recognize a facade pattern within the design all right it doesn't mean that creators of the atomic explicitly went this is a facade and they named it a blah blah facade class or whatever facade ser service right you do not need to name your things facades facade is just a pattern that you can look at and you're like ah this is a facade this is what it does i shouldn't do those other things to it otherwise i'm gonna break a pattern in this area okay datomic is a database uh, although it does way more than just a database so Let's take a look at this diagram. You have a couple of components. You have the client library and then you have the peer server. So the peer server is like an API that you host that allows you to fall into the system behind the peer that facilitates this database, right? This datomic database. You have the thing that does transactions. You have the cache in there. You have uh, uh, the storage mechanism, uh, peer app process, whatever that does. But essentially, yeah, you have the client library, same as with any other database, right? You can either use the client library, but the real facade here is the peer server. So the, the client library is a, a very convenient access. However, nothing stopping you from making your HTTP call yourself, right? So the real facade here is the peer server because the real spider web uh, that is here is after the peer server. That is where all the arrows are starting to go in like different directions. And that's where the peer server goes and contains them. This is an on-premises solution. So let's say you wanted to host your database on your server or locally. This is something that you would be looking at. Datomic also have a cloud hosting solution. And this is, I think, a really cool concept as well. So how you may have like different applications that you are going to pull and use. Like for example, just a hardware store to store data in, right? So your SSD and you're just going to write stuff in there and then you have your RAM for memory for fast access and caching and whatnot. They do the same thing, but instead of using the components on your computer, they use the components of the cloud. When you are querying the database, the application itself will know to either look up an index in S3 storage or, you know, use a DynamoDB for transaction logs or EFS. I don't know what EFS is or some caching or whatnot. Once you take Datomic to the cloud, you're again using the same client, to talk to the same peer server. But now the implementation, the, the interface is the same. However, the implementation detail will be cut off. And instead of these bits, what you're going to see is you're going to see the cloud S3 buckets and Dynamo DBs and EFS, whatever that is for cashless. I don't use AWS. I don't know what the, uh, what these services specifically. I, I know what S3 is. I, I a little bit know well, that Dynamo. That doesn't matter. Besides the point, right? The point is that now you're still accessing the same facade. The system behind it is different. So instead of uh, these components that would be individually hosted on your hardware, you take the hardware provided by the cloud, so S3, DynamoDB, and whatever this other component, 
And then once you have a way more complicated system, again, Datomic essentially is built on top of AWS components. And instead of implementing your own scaling strategies, load balancing your own security, it already basically says, right, you get a VPC. So this, uh, your private network, uh, you get the bastion host. This is how you connect to it. So it takes all these components from the cloud and it just basically aggregates it. And more or less, you use it in the same way. Coming back to the original explanation where we have a spider web of components, how they're communicating. The facade provides an easy to use interface that will know how to use these components to facilitate whatever action you're asking for. Be it in a microservices scenario, we're using the infrastructure in a convenient way. So you either need to write a big uh, transaction that's gonna power up your DynamoDB and go through it in a more efficient way and control that aspect automatically. You shouldn't be even aware that it's using the AWS infrastructure. Same as when you're going to the restaurant, you don't wanna know that there is a chef cooking your meal and, there, and that, that there could be potential hair in it or somebody could spit in it, whatever. That's a leaky abstraction. It's a perfect facade. The staff, the restaurant is invisible. You just feel the atmosphere and you're having a good time. And that's what you want in your developer experience as well. Or if you're building a library, to provide it to someone else. Whoa, hold up. Look, this is the stuff I used to torture myself on the weekends. Now, it takes time to digest this and package it up into these videos. So if you did enjoy the content, please like, subscribe if you want to see more, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. And if you want to be part of the community that I'm building, make sure to join my Discord server. I also stream on Twitch Wednesdays and Sundays, six o'clock London time. I have also opened up a merch store so if you do want to support me, don't just donate, buy from there. Links to all of that and my other social media are in the description. Hope to see you again and have a good day.